Welcome to the Expert Talks by Kalkine TV. I'm Sage. Today's guest is Mr. Niklas Jarvstraat. And Niklas is the board director of the Moon Society. Yes, you heard right, the Moon Society. And for some background, the Moon Society is a self-sustainable society based on the resources on the moon. And Niklas has bought an old school building in need of repairs and intends to create a moon colony validator there. The main aim is to demonstrate the steps required to become completely self-sustainable from the resources available on the moon. I'm definitely keen to find out more as our society aims to become more of a circular economy with time. So bringing you live today, we have Mr. Niklas Jarvstraat, Board Director for the Moon Society. Welcome to the show, Niklas. Thank you. So, Niklas, you have a big mission ahead of you, making something out of nothing virtually. We're so glad you found some time to join us today. The idea of the Moon Society is fascinating. Would you please talk to us about its key goals? Well, it's a rather old uh, society, actually, mainly based in America, to I'm personally Swedish. But uh, our main aim is um, simply to have people living on the moon. Um, and uh, as a step towards that, and also hopefully after that has happened, we want to be the voice of, for Lunar Settlement. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, people like Elon Musk are beginning to think about colonizing places like Mars. So uh, with the resources on Earth becoming you know, less plentiful, I suppose it's not completely out of the box to think about other options. So could you please shed some light on the Moon Colony Validator? Yeah, uh, I've been thinking about that for quite a long time, actually, and I want to do something for getting mankind into space. So as you said, I, I bought this old schoolhouse in need of repairs, and uh, the aim is to make that into a research and visitor facility, trying to demonstrate uh, the different steps needed in order to make a completely self-sufficient small human society uh, using only the resources available on the moon as a kind of uh, ground rule i have that you're you're allowed any technology or any tools that you want but you have to be able to uh, make a copy of it so you have to be able to replace it you using only the resources that you can obtain from lunar rock, essentially. Right. So I'm, I'm fascinated, I must say. It sounds like an excellent social experiment. And in this project, what are the next steps of the production network you'd like to focus on? For example, where are you going to get uh, electricity or what type of energy are you going to use? Well, for, for energy, uh, you, don't, you don't have most of the energy production sources that are available on Earth on the moon, but uh, sunlight is plentiful and there is also quite large thermal gradients so you, that you can use in order to uh, produce more heat, at least, using um, heat pumps. So um, we will need to find a way of uh, producing um, a photovoltaic solar panels so that's probably not the first step for me to do I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start with the simpler things uh, if you want making metals making tools making soil out of rock which isn't quite as trivial as it may sound and then of course growing food uh, I intend to grow bananas and uh, fish in an uh, aquaponics facility. Sounds incredible. So I'm very keen to hear more about your opinions about how this is going to develop and the ideas that are going to come out of it. But can we first find out a little bit more about your background? So to get involved with a project like this, it's, it's no easy task. Are you an engineer or a scientist um, initially? Yes. I, I'm, I'm, I consider myself to be an engineering scientist, so you're uh, doubly right there, I would say. Um, I can, with just a little bit of stretch, call myself a rocket scientist. 
not that rockets is anything that I'm going to focus on in this project, but uh, I have done a lot of uh, research on uh, aero engines and rocket engines and high temperature materials. Well, I must say that from reading sci-fi and watching sci-fi, we do uh, get some sort of mind expanding experience and talking about your project is in a similar vein. So in your opinion, how is the Moon Project going to bring a new set of ideas to our society? There are a couple of different ways, I would say. One is uh, mankind into space, that, that in itself, as, as you aimed, it's, it's mind boggling. And one of the more influential ideas that we have seen so far is the picture of Earthrise, which the Apollo astronaut took. And I think uh, the kind of uh, expanding new horizons and that kind of endeavor in itself will uh, spur uh, new ideas that are not necessarily directly connected. It's just that uh, it uh, broadens the mind. But also, in order to survive on the moon, uh, you have to have a really uh, coherent and sustainable production system. And of course, if you can make a production system so that you can squeeze uh, uh, a living out of uh, the moon rock, then you will essentially be able to do the same thing anywhere on Earth as well. So it will uh, bring a lot of... Uh, a new lot knowledge into sustainable production and how to keep that uh, very lean and uh, contained. Absolutely. I think more investigation into the atmosphere and its properties could possibly um, help us to understand how we're going to progress as the climate is changing significantly. And lastly, of this very interesting discussion here. We'll just take one more point. What objectives have you set for the moon base project for the year 2022? Well, as you mentioned, the schoolhouse that I bought is in need of repair. So um, repair and insulate. It's an old building, so it isn't properly insulated for modern standards. And of course, to start, then start some, or at the same time, start some validator activities. As I said, I want to grow bananas and fish. I will mm. plant some banana seeds and uh, install a couple of aquariums and, and start making that into a, a ecosystem so that the, the waste products from the fish will uh, be used to grow the bananas. Uh, I also want to have visitors, obviously, so uh, to uh, change the uh, physics uh, hall to uh, a conference facility and uh, include some uh, sleeping facilities, so kind of a hostel, and uh, start doing some type of manufacturing, uh, buy a welding machine and, and uh, do that. I That's part of the research I've been doing is to, is to welding technology, so that comes natural for me as well. That sounds amazing. So um, how are you planning to fund the project? Are you looking for sponsors like NASA or universities and science organizations, or are you going to run movie nights um, with space movies or telescopes, perhaps? <laughs> it's, it's a rather remote location, so a movie nights will uh, probably not be a, a good uh, uh, income stream conference is thing and uh, to have uh, uh, people with uh, competence in the different fields that i will need to have them come visit and have uh, uh, lectures and uh, a conference on different uh, parts of it and in and then you might also uh, attendees to attend that uh, also, it is a uh, rather scenic area, so just uh, to run the hostel as a hostel and, and uh, charge for people uh, sleeping over is also part of it. But also, obviously, uh, research funding. Uh, NASA tends to be a bit reluctant to uh, pay uh, money to aliens, as they call non-Americans. 
but the uh, European Space Agency has some projects and uh, I have been working with the collaborators and applying for funding from the European framework programs as well. So um, I, partly rather mundane uh, visitor center and uh, partly research center with uh, several different activities. Yeah, so it's a fairly destructive time that we're living in and the fact that you're trying to create something new to learn more about the world and the um, galaxy we live in, I think it's great. So where is this beautiful location you talk about? Uh, it's in uh, uh, Norrbotten, north of Sweden, uh, pretty close to Luleå, to the east of Luleå, at, at Okay, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. We really do appreciate your time. Do you have a website? How can people reach out to you to find out more? Uh, I will have a website which will be isru.tech, ISRU for in situ resource utilization and .tech for technology. Lovely. Thank you for being available for our expert talks show today, Nicholas. We appreciate your insights. Thank you for having me. And if you just joined us, we had a very interesting discussion with Mr. Nicholas Jarvstrat, the board director of the Moon Society. To watch the full interview, please head to YouTube, Calkine Media's channel, and the recording will be there. Keep watching for more of these live expert talks and live market updates. Until the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media.